Okay, Dale, are you ready? Ooh. Ooh like there was this people. Is... There were people baiting us on Twitter this morning, hoping to see a live demonstration of the XML updater or some awful thing like that. X Query so... Transformer. Yeah. Ooh, that would be pretty brutal. But I, I guess if it goes well and we work our way through all the transformers, it's going to happen. <laughs> so what happens is this. Um, I like I like to call this the de dictionary definition of infotainment because it's going to be entertaining to watch us squirm, but hopefully educational, informational as well to learn about Transformers. And I figure that we can throw some things in there that you really might not know about the history of the Transformer and maybe what some of the settings are. And if we can demo it, we will do that as well. So that's what we do. We pick a Transformer at random. We'll try and demonstrate it. We'll tell you all we know about it and you learn. How do we decide how it's going to be random selection? Well, we are going to let the marbles decide. Um, we have a marbles app, and we are going to use that to pick which transformer is selected. So I don't know how well this will appear on the stream, but I've got this marble uh, app. Let me see, which one was I going to use? Multi-lane madness, okay. So we're going to start out with 528 marbles. Some of these, I suspect, might be aliases and not real transformers, because I don't think we've got quite that many. But yes, yeah, so let's do a contest. Um, I know some of these marbles won't reach the finish, because it's there's one of these tracks where marbles fly off at different angles, and they don't always make it down the, uh, the track to the finish. So. If you want to type into the question panel or chat window, whichever it is for you, how many marbles you think will finish out of 528? And the one person who gets closest, we will give you a prize. Just an off the cuff contest there. So yes, yeah, so some of those transformers are gonna fly off the, uh, the track. How many do you think will finish out of 528? And I suspect, There'll be quite a few that fall off this track, but there'll be quite a few that finish as well. So, um, okay. Wow, it's crowded. So there are all those marbles there. It is. It's it's quite fun watching. Is I hope I hope you get the really get the good effect on uh, on the stream, but I suspect it might be a little bit jerky. But um, we shall see. Uh, everyone guesses. Everyone's got a guess in. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to hit the start button now. Of course, the most important is not how many marbles finishes, but which one finishes first. And Oof. right now it's the attribute splitter. Which is taking a leap <laughs> into space and wow. all these I'll other ones are just flying off the edge. I'm not sure. There's the attribute range mapper. Oh, this is just going to be so... See, you're probably a little bit behind on, on the display. It's the attribute rounders in the lead now, rounding the corner. Uh, oh, the <laughs> angularity calculator. It's shot into the lead. <laughs> oh, man, this is just... I don't even know what's lead. Uh-oh, XML Appender was there? Rasta Tyler? <laughs> what are we going to have? So here's where I can sing for you, Mark. Now the race is on, and here comes pride up the back stretch. Heartaches going to the inside. Oh. My tears are holding back. They're trying not to fall. <laughs> My heart's out of the running. True love scratched for another's sake. The race is on, and it looks like heartache. Whoop, heartache, and the winner lo Ooh. loses all. Ooh. And what happened, Mark? I think the XML one must have flown off the tr Oh, no, it's in the lead again. <laughs> I think we might be in trouble now. It's still going around in circles in a bizarre way. XML Appender. Yeah. I think that one's going to win. No. Oh, yes, it did. It just made it in front no. of the feature merger. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that. Oh, dear. So there's your uh -oh. finish. Uh-oh. No, XML is not rigged. <laughs> Somebody's asking that in the question. And if it was Don with us today, then yes, I would agree it was Rick. But uh, I think Dale and I were hoping for a non XML transformer. 
All right, it's time to start. Can we Hello. call a friend? Let's see if Dean is in Manitoba. He should be able to tell us. That's true. I don't know if Dean's online. Let's just let it finish and see how many Transformers did finish. It looks like I'm going to reach out to Dean. 355, 355 Transformers look like it's uh, Marvels looks like it's going to finish. So um, I think that's going to be the number. Did anyone pick 355? Oh, somebody picked 354. That was pretty good going. So um, I think that's probably going to be the nearest. But yeah. So yes, there's the winner, the XML Appender. And followed by the feature merger and the center line replacer, which I think we would have preferred, but that's okay. We can do XML. Feature merger would have been easy to talk about. It would. It would have been a good one as well, but that's okay. So, yes, Elizabeth, you want to see who came closest to 355 and let us know. Yes. But in the meantime, do I have FME fired up? I will now. XML Appender, what does it even Marbles do? Marbles have chosen. We are going to look at that and we are going to tell you everything we know about this transformer, which may not be Ooh. a lot. Oh, assemble several XML documents into one. So one accepts a single XML document and the other one accepts XML fragments. So in that way, Every incoming fragment is appended to the end of the main XML document. Interesting. <laughs> okay, Mark, on the popularity, if you go to safe.com slash transformers and check this one out, it's number 415 out of 500. <laughs> so, it's, uh... so it's not the most uh, popular, got... but it's... Sorry, Dale, you were... I just say Dean is there. So let's see if he uh, can help us out. Okay. Um, so I, I well let's have a look at some of the uh settings so we the document comes in and i assume that document can come from an attribute or an xml file so we can read an xml file let's see if i've got one online somewhere in uh i must have some somewhere oh i know i've got some metadata there we go i've got three xml files so I can read that one and you get to choose how the fragments are attached. Do they become children or siblings? Um, I would think if I'm going to merge three different XML files together, they would be siblings. And the append path in the document, do we know what that does? Let's click the help button. I'm sorry, we it's one of those transformers that I guess we we're not too up on. Uh, nor is I wonder if anybody on this call has ever used it. So well, that's a question, isn't if, it? if there's any we can ask the audience, isn't that a thing you typically are able to do in these sorts of situations? And path document and path into okay, so okay. That's so, probably where you want to insert it into. Yes, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. Now, I wonder if this lets you browse for it inside that file. No, it doesn't. See, sometimes you can do that. Sometimes you can browse through uh, that. Yes. I'm just going to pick another XML file, the medium one. I'm going to click OK just to, because um, what I want to do is, can we open the file directory? No, that should let you do that. We should have that on the pop-up, I think. But that's just me. Um, let me see. So we had that one. Let's inspect that with the FME data inspector. And it is plain XML. Now, do we have to define schema for this <laughs> you can tell we are not xml in fact i'm not even sure that's going to read till we give it a yeah, we, schema gonna... document oh that's that's an esri um uh, metadata xml it file is, yes now do i have a the schema document in there as well not a chance 
Probably <laughs> not. No, it's a shape file. So um, open file location. We may have met our match here, Mark. <laughs> well, I think we might. Can we talk oh. about feature merger? For example, feature mergers like like I should check. Check how it is in the. Okay. Um, if folk would not mind, I think feature merger would be easier for us to do, and it will be a lot more educational <laughs> for you folks than us trying to stumble through that one. Um, Let's go for silver here today, Mark. Okay, we couldn't get the gold, but we'll go for the uh, feature merger. So, Centerline replacers had a lot of work over the years too, but uh, yes, but we'll do feature merger. Okay, so what can you tell me about the feature merger, Dale? It's number four in our transformer gallery. So we're going from one end to the other. Tester, attribute manager, attribute creator, feature merger. But the big thing that it does is it brings two streams of data together. And we have of interest to this group is that we tried a couple years ago to convince people that they should use the feature joiner instead. Yeah. Um, because that uses more sort of industry normal database terms of right and left, inner and outer join and so on. Feature yeah. merger is a little bit more quirky, um, but it but there's no stopping its popularity at this stage. So yeah. what we've done is swing around and we've done a bunch of work to really improve the performance of feature merger. I can't remember, that must've been released in FME 2021, or do you know? I think uh, it was, yes, because we said use yes. the feature joiner, it's way quicker, but people just like the feature merger. And to be honest, I did as well. It's, it's... <laughs> You don't have well, to who, quite as much. You don't have to know SQL to, uh, to know the feature. Because what could be more clear than requesters and suppliers? But well, for, for those, you know, the, the history of this was that the underlying technology was invented so we could process E00 files for the old timers and ARC Info coverages, um, where the polygons would be the requesters and the suppliers were the various lines, and we could bring them together and then form polygons out of them. So it's, it was good for resolving one to many types of situations and, and actually even doing geometry manipulation, in this case, creating polygons out of lines. But most people use it for just attribute joining. So I have a CSV file yes. and I'm joining it to another CSV often and I put them in there and configure it and off I go. And if, and if it's a one-to-one -one kind of join, which is very, very common, then it'll, it'll actually in modern FME be extremely fast. Um, yes, it's been If updated. it's one to many, then you're going to have a little bit, um, you know, then you've got to get into making lists, basically, which uh, then you might want to explode them afterwards or whatever. And in a rare case where you're actually trying to create geometry, you can use that too. So, yeah, and I'm, I'm just setting this up as another example, because one of the things you can do is merge all of the suppliers or, or this, a single supplier onto every one of those features as well. Instead of giving it a matching attribute, you can just say connect one to one, or uh, yes, it can be anything. You say B to B, as long as you get the same fixed value in, in in there, then basically that supplier will get merged onto every requester, which uh, the so-called unconditional feature match. Yes, and I find that very useful in um, in workspaces because you're you're doing something with some data down here, and you want to attach it to this other data. Or maybe it's even come out of this record in the first place and you process it in a way that destroys the original geometry and then you just pass the result back onto the original one yes. rather than trying to reconstruct yes. that geometry. Yeah, so rejoining the streams is an often thing. Actually, there's yeah. been a couple of people chime in in the discussion, Mark. Some folks saying that the SQL, if, if you're teaching FME or working with SQL people, they will like the feature joiner because yes. that's more natural to them. Yes, um, absolutely. More, I guess gis -E people or longer time FMEers may find the terminology of the merger better. And yeah. Joanna points out that the feature joiner will only let you compare attributes to attributes. So you can't execute functions and do constants like right. you're doing here. Yes. So this one's a bit more powerful in that respect. Yes, That's a could, really, yeah, good point. Yeah, we could do that. We could trim, we could trim the key in case yes. you've got, um, you've got spaces on your keys and they don't match. You can trim them directly. Yes. You know, I mean, yeah. Joanna, I'm going to make a note of that one because we do have the technology. When Feature Joiner was written, it was one of the first ones to use our high, high data, high data volume um, infrastructure. But today we could actually solve this. Back then we couldn't. Anyway, yeah. very good. I mean, the other thing that the Feature Joiner does is it lets you do these outer joins where you keep, like, you keep all of the left, but you just attach all of the right that matches. Yes, uh, and, and you can. 
Okay, no, let me let me phrase that another way. If you've got many to many joins, the feature joiner will create a feature per join. So if you've got 10 features on the left, 10 features on the right, and they both all, all join to each other, you can get up to 100 features coming out. Whereas yes. in the feature merge, you would only ever get 10 features, but you yes. can have a list. So they, yeah. Which, yeah. Which you can then explode or not, depending on what you're wanting to do. Yes. So I, I know that the whole list area of FME is a fascinating one, um, kind of an invention we came up with to deal with one-to-many type of situations, but it can allow some creative ways to solve problems. Um, at the risk of a little bit heavier memory use and a little bit slower processing for now. Uh, top people at Safe Labs, uh, I'm kind of joking but not, are, have, a, have a plan in place to actually really improve the speed of list transformers. Oh, um, it may not make it, it, pro it won't make it for FME 2022.0, but, um, but it is something that we're actively looking at, which will remove that kind of fear of using lists. So, um, yeah. Well, that's I'm sure great. there's some, yeah. some on this in this call that like using lists, and you'll be happy about that. Yeah. There's also some plans to be able to basically um, apply an operation bang to all the elements of a list as well. I think actually Joanna may have done a talk about that in the past. I'm thinking at uh, an FME UC, and we're looking to productize some of those ideas. Yeah, fantastic. One of the other things I've mentioned is the feature merger is taking two streams that are already in your workspace. So yes. If you've got a stream of data that you want to match to a database that's already exists online, you don't need to read that database in. You can use a database joiner instead, which more or less does the same thing, except it calls out to a, uh, a database somewhere, like on PostGIS or whatever. And uh, yeah, so um, if you don't need to read the data in, the feature database joiner is a, is a good alternative to that. You know, actually, Mark, um, shameless promotion of a previous webinar. I'm just going to chat it out. We did one that was more generally about um, merging and joining data. Mm -hmm. And I think I just quickly looked at the table of contents. For higher end things, you can also use the inline courier. Right. And while we're on this call, I'll mention to folks that the inline courier is getting a big overhaul in FME 2020. The, the guts of it are being redone, so it'll support bulk mode. 2021. Ah, 2022. Ah, what number are we on? <laughs> Which yes. year are we? <laughs> what, what year is it? But it feels like it's still 2020. And nothing's really happened since then. But anyway, um, it's going to be uh, drastically faster. And we may end up getting some, some sweet spatial light support in there. So these queries would be able to do um, spatial operations as well. Yeah. So the inline query just lets you do um, a SQL command of your own choosing. It's not even like embedded into parameters. It's like you can actually type in a SQL query uh, and you can bring lots of data together. And it's like having a database in there. Each input is like a different table and you can carry out a query uh, however you like. So um, that's, a, that's another good one for SQL fans. Um, feature merger. The other thing we can do with the feature merger, and I, and I like doing this, is you can use it for change detection yeah. Which I don't know if uh, people necessarily knew this, but what I'm going to do here is a very quick demo. I can't do spatial data, but we could do. I'm just going to sample a random selection of data. So we'll say every eighth feature will, will we'll pick that out to do something with it, and I can put an attribute manager down. Let's see, we'll just alter the, uh, the tree count to increase it. So we'll say tree count plus one. So somebody's planted a tree in those parks. Um, so that's just our source data coming in, really. And we can, let's see, now how do we do this? We would have to match the park ID. Yes. And the tree uh, count. Yes. So yeah, we can do multiple matches. And we're doing attributes only. But the only yeah. will ever test for attributes, it just that's just saying, do you want to copy the geometry over as well? Um, process duplicate suppliers, no, because it should just be a one-to-one. -one. 
yep. result. Yeah. So now we should be able to run this and find that. There we go. Yes. So 10 features, <clears throat> excuse me. So 70 features were merged. That means they're unchanged. 10 features didn't match. That means those are changed requesters. And these unused suppliers are the changed change suppliers, basically, these features. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know, Dale. I mean, I always thought this was better than the change detector because it just seemed that little bit quicker. But um, maybe the change detectors. Uh, Actually, this this will this will run more quickly than the change detector will. OK, so yeah, okay. I do and mind. especially. Yeah. Sorry, go on. You're saying no, I, especially um, if it's uh, high data volumes coming in there, because yeah. change detector doesn't do bulk mode. This thing does, and I know that this thing builds okay. in modern FMEs a very fast index. Just this, it uses basically. We took the brains of the feature joiner and popped it in under the feature merger, um, so it got it got an update. Fantastic. You know, Mark, uh, Dan asks an interesting uh, question about the pros and cons of using a database joiner versus sucking the whole database in. And Right. And uh, did you want to answer that? Because I've got an answer as well. If uh... Why don't you take a stab first and I'll... Uh... Okay. So th the primary advantage is that every you don't have to read the entire database all at once. So if you're matching 80 parks to 100 thousands or a million records you don't have to read that million records in. you just say match this to that database table and you've got the optimize option which says okay well i can run a query to prefetch what i know uh, might be there but every time you run this it will cache a certain amount of data not the fme caching with the green icons you see just a different sort of cache and so if something's matching more than once it will uh do that so i always thought that would be way quicker like if you had that million records you were matching 80 things to basically would send off 80 queries to the database and you get your data back but i found recently that's not always quicker um, because every time you're doing a, uh, a query it's sending that off to the database if it's a database that's online like a post just one you've got the internet to uh, travel across as well and I found, yeah, I, I, I ran a, ran an example and I found it took way, way longer on the database joiner compared to just reading the whole of the database table in in the first place. So that's, I've always it said would be it was a, quicker, but. Yeah, it would be a function of how many um, rows there are in that database. Yes. There is, Mark, I think I can't really see it with my bad eyes, but I think that there is a, a concept of a prefetch query down in this. There thing is, too. yes. And I'm trying to activate it and I can't. I think you have to choose a database format. Like oh, it okay. only through, so if you choose PostGIS up there or Postgres. Okay. Let's do that. Then you should be able to do it. Okay, there so we then, go. Yes. So, so if Mark would have done select star from the table, that would basically pre-cache the whole table and he should then be back in business yes with the, the fast other, one the other thing i and i just did that there let's see if i can improve the uh the font size a bit in this dialogue um select star from parks where city equals vancouver so you can always put a where clause on that as well just to bring in data that you know will match like yes. no no none of these parks would match any other city because they're in vancouver so that's something you can do so in the old days um the advantage of the database joiner is that it's not blocking which means when you configure this right. we will be ready to join to whatever we're going to point to and then as data enters as soon as one thing enters it will leave immediately with its answer so you don't have to wait yeah. until the end or anything whereas something like the feature merger kind of has to wait till everybody is in until it does its work yes um so so there can be some feature, uh, some some issues like that. If you're joining to a CSV or Excel file, that is equivalent to bringing it in um, separately because we will read the whole Excel. If it's a non-SQL based thing, we have to read the whole thing and kind of make our own structure. Um, so there's no uh, downside there. Right now, the database joiner is not bulk mode happy, which means okay. in high data volume, we kick down to traditional FME processing. Ironically, just yesterday, I was involved in writing up a plan for making it bulk, bulk mode happy. Okay, um, excellent. So 
it is on the the list soon. So uh, in the short term, you're probably better off sucking stuff in and in, yeah. into a feature merger or joiner. But um, anyway, we, hopefully that me, gives you some ideas. Yeah, for me, it was the cost of sending yep. a query to the database and waiting for the result to come back. It, it yep. was just way longer. And because I've got a machine that's got, I don't know, 20, 30 gigabytes of memory on it, reading a million or two records was no hassle anyway. So it was quicker just yeah. to read everything all at once, even though I knew it was going to match. So, you know, Mark, I, I see that we only have four minutes left, and you and I could Ooh. talk about feature merger all day. But um, <laughs> we, should we could. Should we do um, a quick round of GeoGuessr just to I see think what that we is? We should, yes. Yeah, so.